Hey guys, and welcome back to another Rocket League tips video. Today, I'm going to be going over the top 10 beginner mistakes in Rocket League. Now I'm super excited to be bringing you guys this guide because I actually collaborated with a professional Rocket League coach to make this list. Now, if you're interested in who helped me with this, this guy's name is Coach Curtis, and I actually found him because he's super active over on my Discord. But trust me when I say this guy knows Rocket League. He's worked with some of the best players in the world, and I'll have all his socials linked down below, but I can't thank him enough for coming on and helping out today. As usual though guys, before we get started, if you are part of the 95% of people currently watching this that aren't subscribed to the channel, then please consider subbing if you find this video helpful. Subbing to my channel is a completely free way to support me, and it helps me get more of these videos out for you all. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about the top 10 beginner mistakes in Rocket League. All right, Curtis and I were debating what order we wanted to put these mistakes in, and at the end of the day, we were finding it pretty hard to say if one mistake is necessarily worse than any other. So instead, we decided to make this list in order of where these mistakes start to appear when you start playing. So the first couple mistakes are going to be mistakes beginners make before they even step into their first online game. But as we go down this list, these mistakes will probably apply to more and more of you higher up in the ranks. So even some of you watching in the plat, diamond, and champ ranks will still get something out of this video. But with that out of the way, let's talk about some common beginner mistakes and how to fix them to help you all climb fast in competitive Rocket League. All right, starting with mistake number one, we had to put bad settings. Now, like I said earlier, these first few beginner mistakes come before you even step in your first online lobby, and this is exactly the case when it comes to settings. So many beginners don't even think to change the default settings, but I promise if you just spend five minutes switching your settings away from the default, you'll notice an instant improvement in your gameplay. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on each mistake in this video because I want to make sure I have time to go through each tip. But something I do want to stress about settings is it's not like there's one perfect set of settings in Rocket League that are just undoubtedly the best. At the end of the day, just because a pro uses a specific set of settings doesn't mean those settings are going to be the best for everyone. With all that being said, there still is definitely a difference between good settings and bad settings. So if you're interested in learning different ways to improve not just your camera settings, but your controller settings and keybinds as well, then definitely check out some of my other settings videos that I'll have linked on screen now because I've made tons of guides that go way more in depth on this stuff. But bottom line is, get your settings sorted out first and you'll thank yourself later. All right, after you've got your settings in check, the next big mistake beginners make is skipping the tutorials. Now, back when I started playing Rocket League, tutorials really didn't teach you all that much, but nowadays the tutorials are actually pretty helpful, especially if you're still learning your controls or you just switched your settings. I was talking about this with Curtis, but for beginners especially, it's really important that you get comfortable with all the different controls when you start so that you can build that base level of muscle memory. So if you're a beginner who skipped the tutorials, take my advice and quickly go through them just to get a basic understanding of how your car moves and what buttons do what. Okay, moving on to mistake number three, we have learning mechanics out of order. Look, the truth is, I don't blame new players for this mistake. When you start playing Rocket League, it's really tempting to try to jump into an aerial training pack and pull off everything your favorite pros do. The reality is though, skipping the basics and trying to shortcut to these more difficult mechanics isn't going to do you any good. And trust me when I say, there are so many players in the gold, platinum, and even diamond ranks that focus way too much on the fancy mechanics. Curtis and I were talking a lot about how there are so many players in the middle ranks that are just obsessed with learning high level mechanics. The fact is though, if you can't consistently do the basics like dribbling on the ground, you can't expect yourself to be able to do all this fancy stuff mid air. Bang up, bang up, bang up tear. Put it reverse, tear. So if you're a beginner and you want to eventually learn some of the more complex mechanics, I highly recommend you work your way up rather than trying to skip to the top. 
To help you get an idea of the order you should learn mechanics, generally what you want to do is start with learning how to control your car before you try to incorporate the ball. In other words, first learn the basic movements like power sliding, dodging in different directions, half flips, wave dashes, driving on the wall, driving on the ceiling, and learning how to land on your wheels. Once you have all that stuff down, then you can start incorporating the ball. So dribbling, power shots, hitting the ball off the wall, and hitting the ball in the air. Finally, once you have those fundamental cart control skills down and fundamental ball control skills down, you can try to combine the two with fancier things like double taps, air dribbles, and flip resets. Bottom line is though, start with the basics and work your way up because I promise if you train this way, you'll improve way faster than if you just tried to skip to the hard stuff. On to beginner mistake number four, and we have bad kickoffs. Now, kickoffs are something that I think a lot of people just overcomplicate. The reality is there are a lot of different viable kickoff strategies, and you don't have to learn how to speed flip to win kickoffs at 99% of the ranks. The most common mistake I see though is low rank players just driving at the ball and not really using flips or doing anything special with their kickoffs. The problem with just driving for the kickoff and not even flipping is number one, you're going to be super slow. And number two, by the time you do make it to the ball, you'll be completely out of boost. So even just something as simple as incorporating a single front flip into your kickoff is going to go a really long way in improving your kickoff efficiency and overall give you a major advantage in every single kickoff scenario. Moving on to beginner mistake number five, we have bad use of ball cam. Now, I've been coaching a lot of people recently across a ton of different ranks over on my Patreon, and something shocking to me has been how little new players know about using ball cam. Truthfully, I just don't think there's enough talk on YouTube and elsewhere about how ball cam should really be used. So here, I just wanted to give some basic tips to help you fix your ball cam usage. The number one tip I have for beginners when it comes to ball cam is no matter what, you have to get used to using ball cam. A lot of beginners think ball cam is optional, but if you don't use ball cam, you are just straight up putting yourself in the dark for most of the game. So if you don't currently use ball cam, make having ball cam on your default mode rather than the other way around. The second tip I have for ball cam that mainly applies to beginners is only really turn your ball cam off if you need to go for boost. Remember, every second you have ball cam off, you don't know where the ball is, and the longer you leave it off, the higher the risk gets. And what I mean by that is, it's fine to turn off ball cam for a second or two if you know the ball is heading to a specific spot out in the field. But if you turn ball cam off for five seconds to go get boost, you'll have no idea where the ball is actually going to end up by the time you actually get the boost. So point is, if there's ever an important play going down like a 50-50 or something, do not turn off ball cam. Only turn it off when you really need to. But otherwise, try to pay attention as much as you can to see what's going on on the field. And I promise, just improving your ball cam usage this way will improve your overall performance and impact in your games massively. Coming in at mistake number six for new players is tunnel visioning. Now, tunnel visioning is a mistake that can appear in two ways. Either you're not paying attention to your opponents or you're not paying attention to your teammates. Either way, the problem really just comes down to focusing on the ball too much. If you made it past mistake five and you have ball cam on, that's great. But you also don't want to get to a point where all you see on your screen is the ball, especially at the lower ranks when you don't know all the positioning and rotational rules there are in Rocket League. Just being able to see whether your teammates are near the ball or away from the ball, or whether the opponent is closer to the ball or farther from the ball than you, is going to give you a lot more information to work with, and that, just in and of itself, will naturally improve your decision making. So obviously this tip here is something you just have to keep in the back of your mind while you're playing, but one trick I've learned recently to help be more aware of where people are in your games is turning up your nameplate scale in your settings. Turning up the setting to 150% or even 200% is going to make it more clear where the rest of the people are in your lobby. And like I said earlier, this is going to help improve your decision making almost instantly. Moving on to mistake number seven, and it is having a bad sense of danger. Now, when you start playing Rocket League, I totally get 
why it can be hard to not know when the opponent has a threat. Especially at the lower ranks, players are super unpredictable, and it can be hard to tell if someone is gearing up to send the ball over your head, or just gearing up for a big whiff. But in any case, something useful Curtis and I were talking about is if you're just getting started in Rocket League, try to behave as if you were actually playing a game of soccer. Let me give you an example. If you're playing real soccer and you see somebody start to back up and get a running start to hit the ball, you're probably going to back up a little bit to prepare for the shot. Similarly, let's say that person is standing right next to the soccer ball and their foot is half a centimeter away from kicking it. In that case, are they going to be able to hit the ball that hard? Mm, probably not. But what's my point? Well, if we take this back to Rocket League, imagine your opponent has the ball sitting right in front of their car. Using what we just talked about, is a front flip from point blank range into the ball going to generate much power? Probably not, which means you can afford to play closer. On the flip side of things, let's say your opponent has a good amount of space between them and the ball, and they're gearing up to make a big hit. In this case, it would make sense to back up more and give your opponent some space before they make the hit. Point is, if you're a new player trying to understand positioning and spacing, try to imagine you're playing a real game of soccer, and I think this will give you a much better idea of when you should back up or when it's safe to move closer and challenge the ball. On to beginner mistake number eight, we have not understanding space. Now, just like with sense of danger, I totally get why new players have trouble understanding the importance of spacing in their games, because Rocket League is a whole new environment and it can be difficult to think about these things when you're just starting off. But when it comes to understanding the importance of spacing in your games, I think it's useful to use another real life sport example and talk about basketball. So if you've ever tried to defend someone in basketball, at a basic level, you'll know you're supposed to stay close and try to stop them from shooting, or even better, steal the ball before they get the chance to take the shot. In Rocket League, the idea is exactly the same, yet when I watch new players play, they'll approach defense completely differently. For example, one thing beginners like to do is sit in their net to try to guard against shots. But imagine you're playing basketball. Would you ever just sit under the rim and wait until the opponent dribbles up to shoot on you? Of course not. So when you think about it this way, it makes much more sense to actually try to apply some pressure to the person on offense. In the same way, let's switch it up and say you have the ball on offense. So for example, if you had the ball in basketball and you saw the other team sitting under their rim, would you go for a half court shot? Of course not, you'd get closer to make the shot easier and then go from there. Yet, in Rocket League, I see plat and even diamond rank players that are given tons of space just booming the ball back down to their opponents, which is, in essence, rewarding them for their terrible positioning. The point is, if you're on offense, don't reward the other team for giving you space by giving the ball right back to them. Instead, make use of that space, control the ball, and actually punish them for it. Same way if you're on defense, don't just give the offense all the space in the world to work with, actually try to pressure them and make them earn your respect before you play farther back. Incorporating these general positioning rules when we think about basketball and other sports is gonna go a long way in improving your play inside Rocket League. All right, I know we've been going through a lot pretty quickly. I've been talking fast, but we're almost done. On to mistake number nine, we have not understanding your role. In Rocket League, unlike other sports, you don't just play a single position. Instead, you have to move on and off the ball with your team to coordinate effectively. Now for beginners, it can be tough to understand what your role should be at any given time. So a nice rule of thumb that Curtis shared with me was this rule called the 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3 rule. Basically what the rule means is if zero of your teammates are facing the ball, then you should be the first to go for it. So imagine if both of your teammates are facing towards your side, away from the ball, flipping and leaving the play, that means it's your turn to hit the ball. Similarly, if one of your teammates is facing the ball and the other is looking away, you are the second in line to hit the ball. And finally, if two of your teammates are facing towards the ball, well, they're probably going to double commit, so <laughs> be ready for that. But if they don't, you are the third man to the ball, or in other words, the last man back. 
Using this simple system isn't going to solve all your problems, but hopefully it will at least clear up some of the times you're caught in a double commit. And trust me, doing this is going to help your game sense and decision making rise way above whatever level you're stuck at. Moving on to the final beginner mistake, coming in at mistake number 10 is bad boost usage. Now, like with a lot of other topics in this video, boost usage deserves a full video of its own. For the purposes of this one though, I just want to mention a few common beginner problems that I see when it comes to boost. For one, I see a lot of beginners getting rid of their boost doors way quicker than necessary. So if you're just moving around the field waiting for stuff to happen, try to ease your finger off the boost so that by the time it is your turn to hit it, you aren't sitting on empty. Another boost tip is try to move around the field in such a way that you pick up boost while you move. Now there is a technical term for this boost pad arrangement and it's called boost lanes, but for beginners, all you need to know is if you wanna go somewhere, try to drive along a path that picks up boost on the way. Okay, the third and final boost mistake I'll mention here is over relying on big boost pads. Time and time again, I watch players that I'm coaching completely leave the play to go get a big boost pad, even if they already have 30 or 40 boost to begin with. The fact is, you can almost always find a way to pick up small boost pads and give yourself enough boost to stay active in the play. And especially at the lower ranks, you don't really need all that much boost to make an impact. So if your team is on offense, for example, do not leave the play and go boost over ball. Instead, try to stay involved as much as possible. If you can implement just some of these boost tips, you're going to find yourself way more active and overall, you'll just have more power to make an impact in your ranked games. All right, guys, I know that was a lot to go over for a single video, but I really do hope there's something in here to help you all improve regardless of rank. If you're interested in improving any specific aspect of your gameplay though, definitely feel free to rewatch specific parts of the video. And I also have tons of other educational content that really goes in depth with some of these things. So make sure to check those videos out if you haven't already. I also wanna give one final shout out to Coach Curtis for helping me put together this list. He was awesome in making this with me. So I'll have all his links down in the description below. If you're interested in interacting with him, connecting with him, definitely check those out down below. One last thing before the video ends though, guys, if you're new to the channel and don't know about the monthly giveaway I do, then this is the part of the video where I'll talk more about that. Basically, at the end of every month, I pick a random subscriber to win two months worth of free private coaching for me. Now, normally I only coach my Patreon members, but if you get picked, I'll coach you for four sessions over a span of two months, completely free of charge. So if you wanna enter for a chance to win that, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and join my Discord, linked in the description below, cause I picked the winner over there. Anyways though guys, that's all I've got. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.